may call it the Traveler. We watch as it hangs above, a mysterious sphere. Silently protecting us. The last city on Earth. Destiny is, um, in some ways, a post-apocalyptic. You know, you see, you know, <laughs> you literally walk through piles of bones sometimes. But the tone that we're setting amidst that bleak backdrop is one of hope, and one of bravery, and one of heroism in the face of incredible danger. You know, we do see it as a bright and hopeful future where, you know, human humanity doesn't crumble under the threat of annihilation, we find within ourselves the very best elements of heroism and bravery. We take what we're given and we go back out to take the fight to our enemies. So it is a, a hopeful story. It is, uh, I think, something where people can feel like they can take the best elements of themselves and project their personality in this game in the form of their own unique hero. hide behind the walls of our city or fight back against our enemies. Uh, people can look forward to uh, exploring, uh, obviously, Earth, uh, the Moon, Venus, and Mars. Uh, we've announced uh, our first expansion, which will land in December, which will be sort of the first broadening, the first elaboration of that journey. Um, we hope to have the right and the luxury to make many Destiny games. There are a lot of stories we'd like to tell in this brave new world, but like I say, we earn the right to do that by creating an amazing game uh, giving you an experience that will blow your mind and uh, hopefully uh, having you come to us and telling us that you're ready for more. If I had nothing to do, if I had, you know, none of my friends were online or, yeah. you know, it was like I hadn't really planned to play so nobody was there to join me, my favorite thing to do was just fire up the game uh, take my favorite weapons and gear, go to the explore mode and just go in there and like maybe hang out in the landing zone yeah. and wait for somebody who just started playing the beta. Somebody yeah. who just yeah, yeah. downloaded the game and they're like, I'm gonna go give this a try, you yeah. know, and they land in the explore mode and I see them and like they're wearing their starter jammies and they've got their brand new gun, you know, yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna wait for him to fall under attack. You know, and sure enough, there he is, he's backed up against the rock face, you know, and a fallen captain is kicking his ass and I show up and I fly through the air and I throw a Manova bomb down, <laughs> you know, and, and you know, incinerate his opponent and then land right in front of him and be like, you haven't unlocked that yet, have you? You know, exactly, you cast him that salute, you jump on your sparrow, you have your lone ranger moment, you boost away, you know, leaving there like, who was that guy? Yeah, you know, exactly. it's like, that's what we mean when we say become legend, because to certain players in this world, they will look at you and say, I want to be like this guy. Well, there's so many decisions that you get to make in the uh, specialization of your guardian. Uh, you were able to tinker with one focus. There are so many different ways you can customize that guardian, obviously. You know, the gear that you wear will imbue you with certain skills, certain combat efficiencies. The weapons that you wield will definitely be indicative of your fighting style, but it is that focus, it is that path of the warrior, you know, your evolution, your, your act of becoming um, is really the thing that people should pay attention to because that's, you know, how do you punch? How do you fly through the air? How do you throw grenades? Uh, you know, what is your supercharged ability, the way you truly wield the energy of the traveler, you know, as a devastating attack? The more you use those things, the more you gain experience in that area, you can choose different ways of doing that. So, you know, I had my favorite version of grenades. Even though you unlock an upgrade and want to use it, you may switch. So like one grenade splits into many pieces and attacks many enemies at once. Another grenade lands and creates a disruptor field that's great for blocking a doorway. So, you know, are you an attack player? Are you a support player? Um, the, uh, the warlock that I played as can be very much uh, an assault character or a support character. It can be about decimating many enemies with my Nova Bomb, or it can be about shielding, or buffing, or even healing my allies. So with those different paths, you can choose what type of role that you want to play in the battlefield. And then once you've done that, in the beta we didn't even allow you to get to the full extent of how you customize a focus, you right? What? what we want to do is we want every single activity in the game to support the narrative of a future human civilization that exists under this protective entity that we don't fully understand. Yeah. We rebuilt 
our city from the ashes of the golden age inside the protective veil of the traveler. Now we are venturing outside of that relative safety of the city walls to go back out into the solar system and say these worlds were ours. We are taking these back. Um, everything supports that. Uh, everything supports that. Uh, that story. Everything supports that storytelling agenda. Uh, you know, the, the way we name the weapons, the way we design the worlds that you're exploring. Uh, you know, I was fascinated, you know, making my way through the Cosmodrome, you know, in every single corner inside those old building dungeon spaces. You can see skeletons that died next to computer terminals, you know, and it's like, you know, and it's, it's all inspired by, you know, sort of like Baikonur, you know, like the old Russian space agency. Yeah. And this was the launching off point for the colonization of the Golden Age. So there was humanity, you know, launching out to the stars with the new technology that had been gifted to us by the traveler. And then you get to the moon and you can see, you know, the decaying ruins of old Chinese military bases. You know, it's like, I just want to know what happened here. I want to know what was going on here and what was human, humanity trying to accomplish, you know? And by the time you get to Venus and you see old academies that were places of incredible science and learning during the Golden Age, or, you know, buried cities on Mars that were really home to, you know, entire cities of, you know, humanity that were engaging in commerce and, you know, industry. And, you know, we're creating places that we could have really only imagined growing up learning about the celestial bodies in our solar system. And uh, with the creative license that the traveler gives us as a gardener of sorts, making these places habitable to us, we can imagine what it would be like to live on Mars and that to have those wonderful creations smashed into the dust by the cataclysm. And then we go back out to try to carve the magic and the relics that was lost out of the bones of those places. As guardians, we will stand together, seize our destiny, and become legend. The goal for us was to be uh, certainly diverse uh, and very vast with the arsenal in Destiny, but also be to very uh, be very deliberate about the design of those weapons. Um, we uh, very painstakingly handcrafted a lot of different weapons in different categories. Um, very little of what you'll see in Destiny, I would say almost none of what you'll see in Destiny is procedurally generated. The worlds that you explore, the weapons that you wield, uh, <coughs> the um, activities that you enjoy were all conceived by Bungie as very specific adventures, very specific rewards that we wanted you to enjoy. So if you think about the different categories of weapons, you know, we are uh, sort of moving away from the traditional stand sandbox from, you know, Bungie games of the past. We're enabling you to equip three weapons at any point in time. Uh, you know, primary weapons, special weapons, heavy weapons, even within those categories yeah. you have different, you know, like uh, auto rifles, pulse rifles, assault yeah. rifles, hand cannons in the special category, you know, you've got the fusion rifle, the shotgun, the sniper rifle, you know, uh, my personal favorite, the belt fed heavy machine gun. Yeah. I pity anyone that uses a rocket launcher, you know, respect yourself for crying out <laughs> loud. We, we didn't want millions upon millions upon millions of weapons because realistically in the universe in which this game takes place there is a human civilization that manufactured these things. Uh, these things are in limited supply so that when you go out into the wild and you find one of these things it truly does feel special. Uh, you know certain legendary weapons will have reputations in the game. Uh, we want these different weapons to be known to players so that they have names and reputations. Where It's like you have super good advice I want super good advice, and it's like, it's mine. it's mine. You know, it's like, it's like you wield thorn. You know, it's like, you know, we want we want these weapons to be like characters in the game. If you have a weapon that has the highest power rating, or if you have a weapon that deals in a certain sort of elemental yeah. damage, yeah, yeah. you know, like I'm fighting an enemy, and if I'm going to penetrate its shields, I need to do void damage, or arc damage, or thermal damage. Yeah. It's like, I'm shooting this guy, and it's having no effect. It's like, you're using the wrong weapons. Think more about this, you know, take a look at what's in your arsenal, and make more careful decisions about that sort of stuff. Um, and in the Crucible, where we level the playing field, you can enter the crucible with a more powerful weapon, you know, what you could say is your best weapon, or you can enter the crucible with the weapon with which you are the best.
So the most powerful weapon in my arsenal might be a pulse rifle or a scout rifle or something that I'm not entirely comfortable using, but I will use it if I face enormous bosses that need to be taken down with immense firepower. But when I go into the Crucible, I have my favorite implement of war, which has a high rate of fire, nice stability, very little recoil. You know, it's like you're going to have your favorite competitive weapon and you're going to have your favorite exploration weapon and you're going to have your worst case scenario I need to beat the raid weapon uh, which is great because it's not just a matter of okay well this is my favorite gun guess I figured that out we're going to actually ask you to reach into your arsenal for different things you may acquire a weapon you're like there's only one thing I'm ever going to use this for I'm going to stick it into the vault because I don't want it in my inventory I'm going to stick it into the vault and uh, that way I know that as I create new guardians, you know, when I decide to go on that strike mission as that new guardian, I'm going to have that magic key that I need for that one engagement. Uh, you can pull that out of the vault and equip it and take it with you. Um, the fact that we're always going to keep you guessing. We're always going to have you looking in your inventory and saying to yourself, in this situation, what do I need to accomplish and do I have the things that I need to do that? If the answer is no, then perhaps this specific activity becomes what we call an aspirational activity for you. You know, like those enormously powerful aliens that you encountered in certain dungeons or caves in old Russia. Yeah, you're not ready for this fight. As the creeper that girdles. There are, there are things that some of these weapons do, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to talk to you about, but I really love people to dis, you know, discover these things for themselves, you know? Like, oh my god, this gun does that? It's like, well, not yet, but, you know, go use it. And it's like, I'm going to explore mode right now, you know? It's like, um, these weapons, just like the people that wield them, will evolve over time and become more dangerous. You combine those weapons with the right gear that helps you, you know, reload them more quickly. You know, now you're maximizing everything that the game lets you do to become more powerful. This is a game that takes place in your home. Your home may have been made strange by the passage of time. You know, your, your, the, the earth that you know may have been reclaimed by nature and gone wild, but there is the opportunity to sort of reclaim the things that we knew, reclaim the things that we've lost, and sort of live up to the golden age all over again. And the strength of the wolf is the best.